Greetings, this is Derek Ong with the continuation of the uh, video series on PLS, um, how to use it for your research, especially for um, uh, postgraduate and um, undergraduate students doing their research in social science or even uh, any other uh, related field. So, with this video, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the theory behind the use of reflective and formative um, measures. Yeah, so far, the videos I've shown you all have been just uh, centered around all reflective measures. But um, one good thing about using PLS is that PLS also helps you to look at re uh, reflective measures, especially when you're dealing with um, multi-item scales. So the central research question in social sciences focuses on the operationalization of, sorry, operationalization of complex structures, you know, especially multi-item structures. So can indicators causing or being caused by the latent variable construct measured by them. So there's a difference between reflective and formative. Um, if you look at the construct here, uh, these are what we call the reflective measures. You know, changes in the latent variable directly cause changes in the assigned indicators. So anything that changes here will obviously be reflected in these three. But if you notice that anything that changes here, it doesn't really uh, affect the other two. Whereas if you were to look into formative uh, measures, changes in one or more of the indicators will cause change in the latent variable. So obviously if you change one, then the whole latent variable will change. So this is the main difference between uh, reflective and formative measures. So if we look at uh, what uh, Diamantopoulos and Winkhofer said, whereas reflective indicators are essentially interchangeable uh, between the uh, indicators, and therefore the removal of an item doesn't change the essential nature of the underlying uh, construct. However, the formative indicators omitting an indicator is omitting a part of the construct. It means you're, you're omitting one part of the construct uh, within the latent variable. So if you see the difference here, the reflective measure approach focuses on maximizing yeah, the overlap of the indicators between the interchangeable indicators, whereas the formative measure approach generalizing minimizes the overlap in the complementary indicators. Think of it like a regression model, and that's how we look into uh, formative measures. So just giving you an example, the difference between reflective and formative. Um, if you uh, have a latent variable called timeliness, then these will be the measures that will be reflective of a person who's timeliness, like accommodate last minute requests, punctuality in meeting deadlines, speed of returning phone calls. So these are all reflective. So it doesn't matter even if one indicator has been taken out, the timeliness still stays. Right? And one of the most important thing is that the indicators must be highly correlated to ensure that they do reflect uh, the latent variable timeliness. Whereas if you were to look at formative uh, measures, you have the indicator variables that are contributing to a latent variable of life stress. So if you, if you take out one of the indicator variables, you know, job loss, divorce, uh, recent accident, um, it doesn't really add on to the life stress if you take out one, and therefore this latent variable life stress wouldn't be so uh, important. And it also says by Holland that indicator can have positive or negative correl zero correlation. Other things that look into reflective and formative worldview, uh, they are interchangeable and they are highly correlated in terms of their uh, indicator variables. Like um, if you are talking about drunkenness, it can be reflected in whether you can walk in a straight line, smell of alcohol or slurred speech. But if you're looking at uh, what are the contributors to drunkenness? It could be a consumption of many different spirits, uh, just like me on a uh, night out with friends. But hey, who cares not to drink when you're on a night out with friends? But anyway, I digress. So just note what is the difference between how to uh, look between uh, format reflective and formative. And um, I'm just going to leave this uh, 
slide with you for you to look through with some very good references. Um, you might want to just pause this video here right now and go through this slide just to give you an idea of whether formative or reflective uh, measurement models is supposed to be modeled in your um, uh, model. Um, most importantly, in Smart PLS, it would be very beneficial for you to model it correctly uh, using theory uh, and using uh, the correct measurements because it will have a bearing on uh, the the the, the um, even if you interchange uh, if you interchange between reflective and formative uh, the what should I say the results will be, will be a little bit different so please make sure that you always check theory and uh, uh, the latest literature on whether or not your latent variable is supposed to be uh, formative or reflective right so uh, so I'm going to just leave you here. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, when you do the uh, reflective and formative, sorry, I missed this one. Um, just a little bit of recap. When you, the only difference uh, between formative and reflective is how you uh, recognize or uh, uh, show the results for the measurement model. Uh, if you remember in a model, uh, measurement model assessment for the reflective, uh, you have to look at indicator reliability, where you look at uh, loadings in Cronbach Alpha, above 0 0.5 and above 0 0.7. Convergent reliability, uh, where you look at uh, average variance extracted, which is AVE above 0 0.5. And internal consistency of composite reliability, CR, of above 0 0.7. And finally, you need to look at discriminant validity between uh, the cross loadings of Fornell and Laka, and of course, HTMT with no zero in the CI. Whereas in formative measures, the only difference you need to look at is if in the reflective you have to look at all the loadings and AVE, then for the formative you will need to check the VIF because multicollinearity, if there is any, you have to remove the items and you have to check the outer weights, which is kind of like the same as the loadings, but these are like beta weights and, and look at the items in their formative measurements and the formative weights. And I'm going to show this to you in the simulation in the next video. Uh, also, in the reflective, if you look at uh, the AVE and CR for loadings, you will have to then report the T stats to see if there's significance. And this, of course, means that you will have to do the bootstrapping, right? So I think that's all I have to say about the difference between formative and reflective. Uh, please watch the next video for a simulation and example. Thank you.